Hello everyone and welcome to the first United District podcast. Um, me, Henry, the host here, welcoming you into our first ever podcast. Uh, hopefully things will go smoothly. Um, excuse any technical hitches we may have along the way, but we uh, we should be right. I'm very happy to say that I'm joined by Jamie Jackson, the Manchester football correspondent uh, for The Guardian The Observer. Jamie, welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and hello to everyone listening. <laughs> thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to welcome you on, Jamie. Um, very interesting time for football at the moment, as you know, as everyone knows. Um, everything up in the air. I think we're all getting withdrawal symptoms at this point uh, from a lack of football. I'm sure you are, as am I. Um, as are most of the listeners. So it's, it's great to have you on. Um, let's start with your big thing at the moment. Um, obviously, it's picked up quite a lot of traction on Twitter. I remember seeing it months ago uh, when you announced that you are, or you have written a biography about uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the Manchester United manager. Um, that's coming out in August now. Am I am I right in saying that? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the, the still planned publication date the only slight caveat is because of the unfortunate uh, cessation of football because of the coronavirus as we all know about um then that might change but having spoken you know been speaking with the publishers this week for example mm. at the moment that is still the plan yeah um so yes it's due out i think the 6th of august kind of just before the new season um starts if it is to start at that time again of course yeah excellent um very, very interesting stuff, and we've, I'll, I'll segue that into the, the first question we got here, which was, um, what did Ole actually think of the book you wrote for him? What were what were his personal thoughts uh, on the book, if any? Well, that's an interesting question, because yeah, it hasn't actually come out yet. He mm. hasn't seen it. He obviously knows that I'm writing it. Yeah. Um, he kindly uh, gave me his blessing, uh, which, if you think about how a biography works, because... You know, this is a biography sort of from cradle, from when he was born, if I can put it that way, to mm. till now. So it's not just about his United uh, time at United. But obviously, that's a, a massive part of his story. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is, with his blessing, it means that when I was speaking to uh, old friends, school friends, you know, players from his past, whoever, mm. often not always, but often they would say, "Well, does Ollie know about this that you're doing this book?" Um, and I would say yes, because, you know, he's, he's kindly given me his blessing. So, therefore, people are almost 100%, you know, uh, fine, OK, let, let's talk. Mm. I think, you know, all the people I contacted, I, I've spoken to, I don't know, 40 or 50 people yeah. um, over the course of the, just over a year I've been doing it. I think only one person um, s- said no. And I don't, that was nothing to do with, it was just, he just didn't want to do it generally. So, you know, but he obviously, he knows I'm doing the book. Yeah. Uh, he knows me. He, he, what kind of what you what you see in terms of his persona, the way he is in press conferences, is kind of what he's like. You know, how can I say when I'm when I'm talking to people for this book, my experience of him, he is a very nice guy. Mm. People gen, generally like him. Of course, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be an amazing football manager, but I think it helps. Certainly, when the business of football management you know in this sort of era if I could put it that way is kind of a lot of it's man management really because you, yeah. you're sort of all the time dealing with players who are multi-millionaires in not all cases but a lot of them have won things or a season uh, international so it's how you get on with them to a certain extent and I know you never asked me about Mourinho but you know obviously he was the predecessor of, of all these and mm. he, that's kind of where he fell down at United a lot was his man management o- Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has that going for him 100% so you know I I'd like to think he's going to like the book, but, you know, until he reads it, who knows kind of thing. But as I say, you know, he knows I'm doing it. He mm. gave me his blessing, which is, is you know, is, it was nice of him. Yeah, that's well, that's that's absolutely massive for you, obviously, isn't it? And the, as you say, it helped you gain more contributors for the book. Uh, obviously, people buying into your in, into your, your sort of project. Um, and just going back to what you said about Solskjaer as a man, I think that's massive for the fans as well. Um, mm. I think, or, or you know, certain certain fans anyway. I think a lot of the local Manchester fans have, you know, they need to feel a, a strong, you know, affection with the manager, and that affection is definitely something that's there with Solskjaer. Obviously, a very, very popular man in Manchester uh, with all he's done. Um, so we'll move, we'll move on, and we'll, we'll stay on the subject of of Solskjaer for now. Um, MUFC Pereira asks thoughts on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first season at the football club uh, as a manager I assume 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm presuming he means first full season. So yeah. this is this is a, this is a, a great question, and kind of is 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 what why this season has been so interesting. So I, I, I've covered United basically since the Mancini title winning season at City. So that was the last season, but one before Ferguson went, mm. and, I, and I and I came in halfway through that. So you know, I'm looking at what's that seven years, eight years of doing this. So I've seen all the managers since Ferguson, plus obviously Ferguson. Basically, the last time United won the title as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'd say this: there's been there's been trophy winning seasons, obviously, since then. Mourinho obviously got got two in his his first year, wasn't it? Europa League, yeah, and yeah. Carabao Cup, and Van Hal got the FA Cup his final season. But what I would say was, <laughs> it's been a roller coaster for for for, 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 for large parts of this season. You know, it was kind of like it was towards the end of last season. Basically, from this moment on, actually. He signed his, his permanent contract at United in the international break of March of last year, and actually, actually after then, it was all kind of downhill. And that kind of okay, you beat you beat Chelsea four 0 the opening day, but it, it was kind of not great. But then you hit this period, basically, and it is since Fernandez was signed, really, mm. uh, the back end of January. You're, you know, you're unbeaten. I was at the last game of the eleven unbeaten, which obviously matched the eleven games that he began uh, his 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 um. Uh, in in a uh, caretaker manner, yeah. Uh, with uh, I was at the game, you know, in Austria, and you know, it's kind of finishing in in uh, finishing before before the season uh, uh, pause in a, in a massive upswing. You've got Fernandez, and also I'd say Gallo was a very smart signing. It ended up looking like people were saying, not me, but some people were saying, oh, it's a panic buy. You know, he, he didn't really cut it at Watford. Or like, actually, if you look at his his record at Watford, it was good. But then if you look further. It started to look like a bit of a no-brainer because he was the, the, the top scorer at the Africa Cup of Nations, but also Oli knew him yeah. from uh, Norwegian football. Okay, so there was a connection there. So he knew the player he was getting, not just the stats and the sort of what I just mentioned there, but the, the person. Mm. Um, so you put all that in, plus last summer, I'd say, was easily the best concerted tran- summer transfer window you've had at United since Ferguson left. I'm talking about, you could see a plan. These three players, Maguire, Bissaka uh, and Daniel James, all look part of this kind of, they all kind of look like United players. Mm. So it's kind of, to, to go back to answer, answer the question, I, I, I was asked recently to give a mark. I, I gave him eight, or I give him eight for this season, for all those reasons I mentioned, mm. but also because he's got the fans back on side. The club is a far happier place than it was towards the end of Mourinho's um, sort of tenure. I mean, one of, the, one of the things that cost him his job, I mean, you know, there was lots of things, but one of them was the fact that the image he was presenting of Manchester United just wasn't particularly... Uh, in tune with what the club wanted, and I think a lot of fans, as you mentioned there, about wanting to feel a link. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, who knows what will happen around the corner? But you look now; it's the most hopeful I've been. I'm not a United fan. I'm not a City fan. Just for people, that I, I'm kind of like a lapsed Forest fan. I, that's, that was my team when I was a kid. Mm. But so when I say this, I'm saying this as a sort of interested neutral. You look the most hopeful, I would say, in terms of having a structure, a base, a long term vision. Uh, under him, Solskjaer, you know, basically since Ferguson left, I'd say there's, there's, you can't really argue about that. So yeah, I think it was, it's, you know, what will be really interesting is, let's say the season does finish and we basically start the same, more or less the same time next year, you know, next season. When we get to Christmas then, then I think you can really judge him, provided, he, you know, the transfer window's not been disrupted because of all the problems. Because then you can say, he's had two summer windows, he's probably bringing three more players. So then you've been looking at eight of his own players that he's brought in, you know, major players, plus the ones, the good ones there, Rashford, De Gea, uh, Lindelof, you know, I could go on. Um, Mason Greenwood looks a heck of a find. Mm. So, you know, all these things, I think there's a lot of optimism. Or if I was a United fan, I'd be optimistic, basically. Yeah, I think um, just, obviously, it's, we're, we're talking hypotheticals now because um, it's extremely hard to judge what, what would have gone on without the interruption of, of the yes. pandemic, obviously. But it's probably one of the, one of the worst times we could have... Well, it probably was the worst time possible this season for it to be cut off for United fans. There's a yes. lot of hope, as you say. Fernandez yes. came in and it seemed to properly revitalise the club as a whole. Um, do you think United would have gone on to win the FA Cup or Europa League? I know it's an extremely difficult question to try and judge. No, no, I mean, I, I appreciate the fact that you say it's difficult to answer and it's hypothetical, but yeah. I'll, I'll give it a go. I think no team would have wanted to meet either, you know, in either competition, sorry. So the Europa League and the FA Cup, um, you know, I was at that game, as I say, in Austria, the... the, the um, uh, Lask. Yeah, Lask, in Linz, sorry, yeah, against Lask. Yeah. 
obviously it's a five nil five nil win, and you know it's the Austrian league, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But you, you looked, you know, you looked decent, like a, pro- a proper football size. So I think, you know, I think you're right. It, it came at a very frustrating time because you obviously would, would say you'd be through to the quarterfinals, right? Is that correct? The next round of the, the Europa League, I've kind of lost track of a little bit. Yeah, it is I, quarter, I, yeah. I, I think that's so, right. So, yeah, I think it is right. So. So, you, you know, you'd probably say that's definitely going to happen after a 5-0 away win. Um, and, you know, you look around at the other teams, there are some decent other sides in that competition. But, yeah, I think you've got a, a great chance. That's one route into Europe. Mm. FA Cup, yes, very good chance. Also, this whole thing we don't quite know with Manchester City, if it's if it remains this um, Champions League ban, uh, then fifth place evidently will get you a Champions League berth. And, you know, you may, United may well finish fourth, but there's another possibility, fourth or fifth into the Champions League. So, yeah, I think you had a very good chance of finishing this competition. I'm not sure they will be finished. I think the priorities are going to be domestic leagues, from what I understand. Behind closed doors is what they're, sorry, behind closed doors is what they're pushing for. Mm. So it is frustrating, but it's interesting because, you know, United fans may be, I don't know, uh, just before Christmas or when you, when you, the, you, you lost to Burnley, I think, in January. Yeah. You know, after that result, I don't think United fans would be saying, "Oh, crumbs! This is frustrating." This, you know, this season had paused then or ended mm. then. It'd be so. You know what I mean? So, you know, two months later, where it is a month and a half later, it's really, really optimistic. So, it is frustrating. I get, I get that, but I, I think, in a way, because you were on an upswing, quite a massive upswing, it's, you know, it's a better time to pause because at least uh, yeah. there is something you, you, you know, you're looking, you can look forward to rather than, well, yeah. do I really want the season to start again or, or you know, recommence? Because look at how bad we were, kind of thing. Yeah, no, I was literally just thinking that as you were saying it, just thinking actually, you know, it's it's quite nice to go in with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of comfort really, just just to be be a bit more optimistic. Yeah, as you say, the Burnley game is a, a perfect example of a game where probably lowest of the low this season for us, absolutely <laughs> dire, dire, yeah. dire performance and result and, you know, the negativity was well and truly flowing at that point. But yeah, <laughs> yes. it was, yeah, I, th- I think you're probably right actually, a bit, bit, bit more comfort. Um Another question here from United Centro. Uh, do the clubs still have doubts about Ole or are they fully committed to backing him? You know what? I can honestly tell you, because this is what I was being told when it was really, as you sort of say, dire, the, the many different times it has been, that all the time the message was, no, he's not going anywhere this season. So, yeah, let's take Burnley. Let's take, I've got the results here. Let's take, um, where else would you lose? Uh, there was, this was Burnley and Liverpool, but then I can remember... Um, Arsenal, you you lost two nil. Yeah. Or the Wolves game. Yeah. So that sorry, Watford, uh, Watford two 0 Do you remember that one just before Christmas? So again, yeah, I was Vicky asking Rose. then, and and even then, when you, you know you got half a season, that was kind of just before Christmas to go. The message was no, he's not going anywhere. So yeah, I don't I, listen at that stage. They, they, they didn't want to be losing, of course not. But I I think certainly now there's not any doubts because I've written a couple of pieces about this. What actually United have done is actually quite refreshing. If you if you just step back at half, half a step from it all, they've actually given. A manager, real proper time. And you don't really get that in, in in football, especially at these top clubs. You know, United is yes, yeah, the biggest club in England. You could argue in the world, but it's mm. certainly up there with, with Real and you know the others. But, and you, you know, you kind of get three or four losses, or you know, you're certainly not allowed really what happened towards the end of last season. And then it kind of continued this year, and you think, okay, uh, you know, let, let, let's let's give him as much time. But they have actually done it. They're starting to get their rewards. So may, maybe it'll cut. Maybe. You know, not for the first time, United's lead will be followed. And other clubs, when it, when they're in a similar situation, might think, well, wait a minute, look what happened at United. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's broken the mould a little bit, that. Mm. So I don't think there are any doubts now. But as I say, if we get to Christmas of, of, of next season, you know, if it starts on time, as I say, and United are bombing, then I don't really think he's got too many places to go just because he's had a proper, you know, a proper amount of time to, to, to um, yeah, just to try and build something, mm. um, you know, good. Yeah. Just um, obviously, you're very supportive of Ole. You can sort of definitely uh, convey that. Um, just going back to previous managers, you would say about the positivity and things like that. Do you think any of the two previous managers, or, or even David Moyes, actually? So we'll go for the, the, the three previous with Mourinho, Van Gaal, and then Moyes as well. Do you think any yes. of them deserved more time this time that oh. Solskjaer's now got? <laughs> it's a really interesting question because I, I do think about this quite a lot. You know, David Moyes kind of inherited a bit of a difficult situation yeah. you know um, and and you know the club now admit that they kind of got the recruitment 
I mean, that, that summer when you could only get Fellaini in, basically for more than his uh, release clause, even though David Moyes knew that because he was the manager of Everton who put the release, you know, after it expired, mm. 27 million, I think. That was just a complete, I mean, I'm sorry, that, that, that was complete a complete disaster. So even now, or not even now, but now the club admits that, 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 that you know, Moyes was kind of, yeah, you know, he, he, what, what else could he do? They got recruitment really badly wrong. And that's kind of, so t- I'm not saying he should have been given another free season, but I think he might have, benefited from a proper summer. I mean, what can you do if you only buy one player in the summer? You know, I know they got matter in the January, but you understand what I mean? It was pretty terrible, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think all of them, I, I, to be honest, the only one I think who, who had enough time and, and wasn't able to do it, you know, and he kind of almost looked like he didn't want to be there anymore, was Mourinho, because, okay, he had two seasons, and that summer, you know, two summers ago, whatever it was, he wanted a centre-back, and he, did, he didn't receive one, and that, it's a bit puzzling, especially as Maguire was one of his candidates and obviously he comes the following mm. uh, year. So they didn't get that particularly right either. I think Van Hal, Van Hal en- tends to end up winning leagues wherever he is. You know, what killed him? He won the FA Cup. What killed him was not qualifying for the Champions League. I don't know if you remember, but I, I, I think, that, was it that season or the season before, you actually had a chance of winning, winning the title um, mm. At one point, it wasn't that that was strong. Uh, I think you went to Chelsea basically and lost. I think yeah. Hazard scored for them. Um, anyway, I think he might have benefited from another season. So they probably got rid of him a season too early. Because remember, you won the FA Cup. It was your first FA Cup since two thousand and four, and your first trophy since Ferguson left. So it's an important. You know what he did there was important. Mm. I thought. Um, so I think Moyes probably should have been given another half a season. So another summer, yeah, after they basically messed up his, own, his only one, yeah. transfer window. And yeah, Van Hal another year, but Mourinho probably had about as much. I think the writing was on the wall. But I think what, the writing was on the wall from when he did that initial press conference uh, on, on, the, on the tour at UCLA. I was on that tour and he basically comes in and says it's going to be a difficult season. You just thought, this is not a great start. Mm. First day of pre-season, setting the tone. And kind of from there, it, it sort of went, went downhill. Do you think the the board let down Mourinho ultimately? Do you think the the board was his downfall, or do you think it was on a personal level? I think it's a bit a bit of everything you say in that question. I think the the board weren't weren't great. Um, you know, it, he'd signed a new contract in January. Uh, you know, of of that season, uh, he gets to the summer, the following summer. You know, f- uh, five six months later, you've handed him a new contract for a contract extension. Surely you've got to back him. Why is why is mm. he there? You know, he's the manager. So, yeah, there was a bit of that, definitely. But I also think I can look at it the other way. And, you know, the Mourinho who was at Porto, for example, yeah, he was he, he, he used sort of things that were difficult for him as a, you know, as, as almost like a positive, right? Mm. Because, you know, it's also against the rest of the world. And that's kind of why I was a little bit surprised by his tone on that tour that I mentioned. There was a thing when he played Sanchez in a game was it in Michigan in a friendly? I, think, I can't remember what it was against. Anyway, he basically said, oh, you know, look at the players I have around me. There's too many young players here. And you just thought, well, wait a minute. It's a pre-season tour. There's a lot of players off because of the World Cup. Because it's 2018, yeah. summer. Uh, and you're sort of just moaning a bit. Um, so I think there was a few factors. It just wasn't a good match. It, you know, it never felt a good match, to be honest, between Mourinho and um, United. Which, going sort of forward to Solskjaer, I think is the best match you've had so far. I like the idea always, if you can, of having a former player, you know, especially a hero at a club. He's got, obviously, that isn't the only thing. He's got to be a good manager as well. But I, I think there is something, you know, the one thing I would say about Solskjaer is when he first came, very first came in, Henry, the very, very first press conference mm. uh, in December, Mourinho had just been sacked. Two or three days later, he's before all, all the slot. And I'm thinking, he's surely going to be a bit nervous. He just sat there like he belonged. And I thought, that's interesting. Mm. You know, he, and that's, but then if you started to think about it, he, he scored the, you know, the Champions League uh, winning goal in 1999, he's, he, you know, he's a hero there. He's loved. He belongs, and he, and he and he was reserve team manager there. He coached the strikers. Yeah, he he, he knew Pogba from from then. Mm. He knew uh, Lingard. So it wasn't. It, you know what I mean? Even though he, he'd yeah. only actually been out of the club, well, he'd been out of the club about a decade, I think. But you know, there were still players there he'd have had as a as, as a youth, you know, when they were kids, and also he, he'd had that playing pedigree. So it, it, you know, you thought, wait a minute, there's something here. So yeah, I think. I think Solskjaer is basically the best fit so far since Ferguson left. Just just going back to the point you made there about a, a former player, um, which obviously instantly gets the fans on side. Do you think the Glazers use that as a as a cop out, as perhaps a comfortable target, um, as someone he, that, that, that the fans won't turn on? Well, when he came in, he was just 
genuinely a sort of stopgap, you know, until the end of the season, you know, because it was such it'd gone so bad under Mourinho. Um, but I think also they hadn't tried that yet. Had they? They, they tried the sort of Fergie light option, if you want to call Moyes that, you know, the sort of the guy who's kind of supposedly a little bit like Ferguson. Mm. They tried the sort of, uh, you know, Van Aal and Mourinho who got massive pe- pedigrees, especially Mourinho, you know, I mean, until basically left Chelsea was considered the best of his generation. Mm. They tried all that. So I think they, they needed to try something else. I don't think it was a cop out. I actually thought it was it was quite brave in a way, you know, to give him it permanently. I mean, um, so no, not really. I mean, you know, they could have gone for another ex player, and it didn't work. I think they got the right ex player. You know, Paul Lynch at the time was very vocal, saying, "Oh, you know, anyone could have done what what he could have done." But the point is, he he went in there and did it. And you know, there's other things, there's other factors at play. They were concerned that um, Anthony Martial would leave because he wanted to leave. Mourinho wanted him out. Mm-hmm. They were concerned about De Gea not signing a new contract. Um, not because he necessarily didn't get on with Mourinho, but because of the, the sort of the way, the direction the club was going. Um, Pogba was sort of in and out of the side, if you remember, under Mourinho. Yeah. Um, in fact, he'd been dropped. And when, when Oli came in, he, he reinstated him for that first game at Cardiff. And he ended up being in the PFA player, player of the sorry, uh, team of the season last year, basically due to that run he had. Yeah. So I think that there was other things going on there, you know, that, that they had to address. And I think in Solskjaer, and this is the, one of the good things about doing this biography, I didn't know obviously much about him beyond, you know, him playing at United and not doing well at Cardiff. But when I started to look into him, talking to players who played under him, even at Cardiff where, where yeah, he bombed, the team bombed, you know, people, Anyone really, you always kind of got a similar thing about him, which was very, very good at doing that sort of thing that all good people do, which is sort of make every, anyone who he spoke to feel important, that he had an interest in them and basically motivate them, get them going. And, I, you know, this is kind of why I mentioned this right at the start. I think that is so important when it comes to, to management, basically. Mm. Um, just going back to Paul Pogba a minute, you just mentioned him, and I think it's probably a good time to segue into him. Probably the biggest enigma at Manchester United right now completely divides the fan base. <laughs> completely yes. divides fans of football in general, I think. Everyone yes. seems to have a, a strong view one way or another on him. Um, do you think Paul Pogba is going to be successful at Manchester United? <laughs> <laughs> That's what a question this is. Yeah. Uh, he divides all, all the people who, who sort of write about him. Um, mm. So... <sighs> Before Fernandez came, and it's absurd, no way at all is he staying there. But I'm just wondering if he's look at, looked at it and thought, wait a minute. Because my, my thing with Pogba was he was always the best player at, at your club. And you could sort of maybe argue that he still is, or maybe Fernandez has kind of taken that over. But his, his issue was, or his problem was, that he wasn't like Kevin De Bruyne at City, right? Where Kevin De Bruyne is the best player there, I would argue. But wait a minute, he's got Aguero, he's got David Silva, he's got Bernardo Silva, he's mm. got Fernandinho, he's got Carl Walker, he's got Ed- you know what I mean? He's in a, he's in a team surrounded, he's in a team filled with sort of superstars. Yeah, you know it's a, it's a proper team if you like. Pogba's issue was he, he didn't have that. There was him, Rashford coming through ish, and and you got De Gea who's a goalkeeper. You know what I mean? But now, yeah. But but the other side of this is I'm just wondering whether because of the Raiola thing, you know that agent is a thorn in the club side, right mm. now. All he doesn't have any issue with, with, with Paul Pogba. I'm just wondering if he, if when it comes to it, put it this way, if they get an offer, I don't know, a proper offer. I, I, let's say the money that they paid out for him. I think you know, so that's 90 million, which mm-hmm. I'm not saying they necessarily get. Cause I'm not too sure who, who who would have it um, coming. But anyway, I think they would consider that very seriously because I think the issue is, can Solskjaer afford to take a chance that, given everything he's building, given the way it's going, you know, Greenwood coming through. You know, Rashford looking a heck of, like a proper A-list player now. You know, inconsistent. I know he's been injured, but before yeah. that, wow, yeah, how yeah. good was he? You know, all these sort of things. Would, would, would Pogba... I'm not saying he's divisive himself, because I know he's very popular yeah, amongst the players, which is, which is an interesting thing, because, you, you know, some of the way he can be perceived, not by me, but by some people, is that he can be divisive. But no, he's very, very popular. But I just wonder whether Solskjaer looks, look, might look at it all and think, can I take the chance that the Raiola thing might be a distraction stroke detrimental to the side what he's trying to build but as I say he really likes Pogba Pogba really likes him he is popular and he is a heck of a footballer mm. you know he won the World Cup with France he scored a great goal in the final you know you can't do much more than that in football can you you just can't no. that's it that's the, that's the ultimate yeah that he, he that's him so 
if you ask me it slightly differently, should they keep him? Yeah, I, I think so. But whether they will, I, I'm not too sure. Just because, I don't know. If he leaves, you've got to, you've got to start to think, well, who do they replace him with? Because they, do, they would need another player. It's difficult, isn't it? It's, very, it's a difficult one. Yeah. But this is kind of why he's the manager, really, for these sort of calls. So it'll be interesting. If he stays, you'll have to make sure it doesn't backfire, basically. Yeah. Um, it's just interesting how, how Paul Pogba himself has dealt with it personally. I think this is my only hold up with it. And as you say, you know, a, a fantastic player, very proven, obviously, very flamboyant. You know, he's, he's six foot three, but he's great with his feet. Yes. A really useful profile to have in the side. As you say, really popular in the dressing room, a good personality, uh, or, or in my, my opinion, is a good personality. Some people obviously um, t- t- take take offence to that claim, but. Um, <laughs> It's just whether whether he could have dealt with it better, and just wondering, do you think? Because I think personally, he could have just come out and, and quashed, quashed all this. Um, do you think Ryan well, was stopping I, him doing that? Well, I think the reason is is because until Fernandez came, and I'm not saying that necessarily has changed anything, but he did kind of want to leave. I mean, it was mm. he said last summer. So if you if you talk about that, yes, not not, not very clever from him, um, and I can see how you know. Some United fans, maybe all, or maybe you know, whatever portion, don't like that. You know that it's their club. I mean, it really is. Obviously, it's always the the fans of a football club's club. You know, if they're, if they're seeing that, it's like, well, you know, thanks a lot. Why don't you just go anyway if you don't fancy it? You know, last summer, what, did he, what was the phrase he, he used? He wants a new challenge. Maybe was it Raul that said? I can't remember. Yeah, but yeah, it was right around the talk so, of him going back to Juventus, yeah. wasn't it? You know, and there's still there's been muttering since, and basically each time Raiola, within reason speaks about the club Manchester United you know he's not very polite he's not very nice basically he's rude basically mm. um, so you've got to think yeah if, if you're if you're you know if you're the player and you really love the club and you want to be there and you've been there as a kid as, as, as we all know he went off to Juventus and you've got that bond why is that going on but these things do happen so I, I, I don't know I, I agree. I, that that sort of stuff is not, and that's kind of what I'm getting at about next season. Mm. If, if there's more of, the, if, if Solskjaer's worried, there could be more of that. You know what? 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 What does he do about it? You know, the issue is if, if he could be happy at Juventus, which he seemed to be. You know, he got to a couple of Champions League finals, didn't he, with them, and mm. was part of the France t- team that got to Euro 2016 while he was at Juventus. Blah blah. blah. If, if he was happy and played well there. Why can't he be at United? So I don't know. I used to think it'd be a massive surprise if he was still there. I still think it would be a surprise uh, next season, but I don't think it'd be as much of a surprise to me now just because of kind of what we're discussing, what we're mentioning. Yeah, but what is his problem, do you think? Because obviously when Jose Mourinho was at the club, there were obviously there was that footage of behind the scenes, mm. um, little, little mutterings of, you know, a dispute between well, those two. Yeah, I think his problem is kind of what I mentioned before, and, and, just separate. If you just forget about the Marino thing for a moment, it's just that the yeah. team isn't been good enough, and he's sort of, in terms of player, he, he's listen. He, he's at his peak. What is he? Twenty seven now. Twenty six. Yeah. Twenty seven. So he's been there. What three years? Is it? Is it three years? Like twenty sixteen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like okay. Four, well, four, four years then. So he's probably thinking, wait a minute, this is not happening here. And and from that um, perspective, I, I completely respect it. It's a short career. You know, if he wasn't any good, the club would be getting rid of him. So there's not really any sentiment. With regard to that, I think that's what his big issue is. is the team isn't is, hasn't been brilliant at all, and he's given it a go. But then the Mourinho thing didn't help because you know he probably picked up on that and didn't like it. Mourinho. It's difficult to know with Mourinho sometimes exactly what 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 sort of motivates some of his you know uh, practices, if I can mm. put it that way. So I don't think. But that's kind of what I'm saying about the soul shot. Remember I mentioned before they were. You know, Pogba wasn't happy. So that's one, uh, kind of one of the small factors why Solskjaer was hired because you know he's a good man manager. Well, that's obviously changed now. He's got Pogba back on side with regard to that relationship. So that's why I give it more of a chance of happening. But to a certain extent, let's say Fernandez never came in, that you know we wouldn't be having this debate really because Pogba would would still be wanting to leave one hundred percent because basically the team isn't really that good. And I don't think you can blame him after being there for four years if he wants to leave. I know it's disappointing for fans, but. You know, four years is quite a chunk of a, of a top player's career. And if he's not going anywhere, he's looking at Real Madrid if he can go there. Or, yeah, maybe back to Juventus or wherever it might be. And thinking, well, well, you know, I've tried it here. It's not happening. So, you know, I think it's kind of understandable. It's just because you've got this Raiola thing basically making it public, you know, it, it's kind of made it a little bit more unsavoury. Yeah. Um, again, let's segue into another question. Um, we've got one from Martial underscore nine. Uh, I think it ties in quite nicely to this. He asks, 
what is the budget for potential summer transfers? And I'm just going to add on to that. Um, the departure of Paul Pogba, if, if it was to take place, which obviously, as, as we've discussed, mm. is still very possible, how will, what chunk will that be added on to the budget? How does that filter yeah, into that's it? Yeah, a good question. If you look at the, the business last year, you actually spent not that much because you had Lukaku's sale... Was that yep. for 70 or 75? And you had, uh, who else went? Da- did Damien go for a few million? Yeah. So you ended up, you know, you, you paid 50 for one Bazaka, 20, was it for James? Yeah. Uh, and Maguire was 70. So that's 140. You only actually ended up net spending about 60. That That's relative, well, that is chicken feed, mm. really. So to, to answer this question, I don't know. It, I think at a push, there's probably 150 million net spent. So that means, you know, that's what you actually spend, how, no matter what, what, what you sell. But yeah, Pogba's obviously going to... If they sell Pogba, they're going to have to buy to replace. I, I, I would put it at between 100 and, and 150, maybe 200 million would be a massive spend for them. Mm. Especially considering what's going on now. Because they are losing money. Now, you know, United have got a heck of a lot of money. That, the, the Adidas deal... As probably everyone you know who's listening to this is aware, it's worth seventy million um, a year for ten years. I think we're in the third year of that. I mean, that's just Harry Maguire as summer, if I could put it that way. And that's just the Adidas deal, yeah, right. Mm. So, so, so you know, before you get to all the other monies that they're earning, they're a massive. They're basically a multinational. They're like a sort of you know a scaled down version of Apple or something. You know what I mean? They're just the, glo- the global reach they have. All these sort of yeah, he's very he's very good at that Woodward, as we all know. So, so you know, they have got a heck of a lot of money, no matter how much they're losing now. Uh, because of the, fit, the 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 pause, but I think minimum, yeah, sorry, roughly up to about 150. So you know, take your number. But if, if you know, if Popper goes for for 100, then you you might see a massive. It just depends on getting. You know, there's talk of, of Sancho. You know, for for my money, you do need another another striker basically. You can pot or, or another player. Does not have to be a striker necessarily, but another player. You know how Sterling has been getting 17, 18, 19 Premier League goals behind yeah. Aguero's. You need another player like that, obviously. It's not rocket science football. You need a really good defence. You need two two or three players who, who can hit high double figures if you're going to win a league, you know, and away you go. And, and United, are, now, now Greenwood might be that player next next season, but it's too much of an unknown mm. to be able to rely on him. So I think the first priority, or one of them anyway, is, is, a, is a striker or an attacking midfielder. It might be Fernandez who, who could score. His scoring record in Portugal was good. Mm. You know, and I think he scored four times for you already, hasn't he? Something like four times in nine games. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, he's, you know, so, but yeah, I think 100 million minimum, I, I think they'll spend. Just going back to your sort of goal distribution that you were talking about there and talking about whether Fernandez or Greenwood can fill the void. Where do you think Anthony Martial comes into that? Obviously, Rashford, our current top scorer, mm. from the left-hand side. Martial, the man playing down the middle. Yep. What debate over his his goal-scoring contributions. Um, mm. do you, what do you think of Martial? Well, it's a good question. It's a bit of a conundrum, but this season, a bit like Rashford, you know, I think when, when we paused, he was certainly equaled his best ever for United, which was the first season under Van Gaal. And obviously, you know, there's a chunk of this season left. Mm. I look at him and I think, he sort of, you know, uh, half a gear or half a sort of uh, development stride from being an, um, an amazing player because you see flashes of it, but you don't see it enough. And obviously that's the key, isn't it? Consistency. That's why Aguero's brilliant because he'll always score or, or Harry Kane or whoever you want to sort of use as an example. Martial, I like Martial. He's, he is a one-off, you know, in that position. He's a goal scorer, obviously, but the way in which he goes about his business, it's different. And it's, I think that's difficult for for defenders. But he's got to be able, really, at United, Manchester United, if you're going to be centre-forward, it has to be, if not 20 Premier League goals, Henry, a season, it's got to be very close, yeah, yeah my book. You look at Van Nisselrooy, you can say to me, well, he's an, an amazing player, you know, for you, strike right. But that's kind of what you need, really. Someone mm. like that who's just cannot stop scoring. Ronaldo, when he was at your place the last two seasons, um, you know, Van Persie, when you won it last time, was it 25, 26? Yeah. You've really got to be getting... 20, 19, 21, 22. So he, I don't know what I don't know what he's up to in the league, but I think, as I say, he equaled his best ever, which I think was 16 under Van Hal in all competition, maybe 17. Uh, I don't know if you could get, you know, if you just use him as an example. If you could get Harry Kane tomorrow at United, I'd say get him because you know you're going to get a captain, so a leader. I know you've got a captain, but you know a leader. But you're going to get 20, 25 Premier League goals without a shadow of a doubt. Mm. Yeah, so, so you sign him. So. I think that 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 kind of 
that's a way of answering the Martial thing. If you can't get it anyone else, let's hope he, he, he takes that extra half a step development wise you need. But I do think you can go you can if you can get someone like a Kane or whoever it might be, uh do it basically, do it. Um mm. but he's a very useful player to have there. You know, I, I like him. I've seen him score some, some some brilliant goals. I just wonder whether he's ever gonna hit. I mean, you know, pretty much if Sterling can do it. I I say Martial should be able to do because I think Martial technically is a better player. Mm. Yeah. Um, just going back to a moment ago, you obviously uh, mentioned uh, uh, you perhaps hinted at a leadership void, perhaps uh, with <laughs> the Manchester yeah. Kane. Um, got a question here: uh, On what basis was Maguire made captain? Well, that's a good question, really. I, I mean, if it wasn't going to be him, I'm, I'm not too sure. I tell you who I think would be a, a good choice, but maybe not this season. Slightly earlier is McTominay. Mm. I think I think he because he gets it. The thing about Maguire, I'd be slightly um, interested about, about it, is he's actually, and I know this is not a, a massive barometer, but when he's interviewed, he's quite quiet, isn't he? He doesn't really yes. give off a massive presence. Now, you have to wonder if he's the same behind closed doors. Now, he might not be, or it might not matter. Like Mark, Mark Hughes, for example, all right, he's never captain of United, but he, by all accounts, he's a very quiet player. But on the field, you know, he was like a leader. Mm. Um, but it's interesting you should say this, because when I did that Lasker game, I did the match report, but then the next day I did a piece about what it's like um, to cover a game behind closed doors. It's a bit of a one-off, yeah. And, and part of it, part of why it was suggested was because it was, you know, you got an insight into who was vocal or not, Henry, you know, because you could hear the players, basically. Yeah, yeah. And while, while you know, Maguire, you could hear it, he, he wasn't, you know, it wasn't unbelievable. It was Fernandez actually, who was, the, you'd be surprised mm. to hear. And also, actually, the goalkeepers, Romero, who obviously... Isn't first choice, but he had no, um, you know, he had no uh, compunction about letting his defenders know where they should be. But Maguire wasn't massively, you know, he's not that sort of sergeant ma- major type. He's certainly not a Roy Keane type. But I think, you know, I, I can sort of see why he was made the captain uh, because he has got a presence about him in sort of an, in a quiet way. Um, but I think this again goes back to the De Bruyne stroke Pogba thing at United, and you mentioned it there. You were right about this void of leadership. You've got to have. Players who, if they, even if they're not, you know, the official wearer of the armband, they are leaders. You know, Mark Hughes was one. Uh, Bruce, Pallister, you know, that team that you had, Beckham in his own way, Scholes. You know, they're all captains, aren't they? They're all like proper footballers. And that's kind of why, to a certain extent, it shouldn't really matter. So, like, Fernandez is there now. McTominay's coming through. I think Rashford's got a bit of a personality, a bit of edge about him. Mm. So, you can start to see it coming. But, really, if you, if you look at it another way, how can you have been sort of... Uh, seven years is it since Ferguson was there and really only had Rooney you know you might have an argument about the, another couple of players but only really Rooney who's been long gone three or four years now since then was anyone you'd look on that pitch and say his personality you've had a personality void haven't you really until recently yeah. and I think that's one of the things that's killed you to be honest yeah no I can I completely agree do you think that decision was wrong then ultimately the Maguire captaincy decision not at the time, no. I could see. I mean, I can't really see who else he could have chosen at the time. Obviously, Fernandez wasn't there then. Mm. McTominay, as I say, is too young. He did. Go, you could say he went a little bit earlier, but he could have got. It, could have given it to the Gaia, right? Because yeah. obviously he's been there since 2011, I think it is. But he obviously didn't want to do that. And I do kind of like it. I have to say, I was a little bit critical of, Mag- or I was a little bit critical of Maguire in the first part of the season. Certainly, I thought he, it was too many heavy touches. He'd give the ball yeah. away, but he has gradually become the player you'd hope mm. so I don't, I don't think it was wrong but I think if it had been hmm, you, know, you could sort of see if this season had gone to the end and he hadn't decided you, and, and then on the first day of the next season or whenever he said right Fernandez is the captain you could say yeah okay because he's kind of the captain already really on that side mm. yeah Okay, uh, just moving on from that, I've got another question here, um, or well, a statement really. Uh, we've been told <laughs> at United District a few weeks ago that Angel Gomez has rejected a new lucrative deal at United, worth more than thirty thousand pounds a week. Do you have any updates on that, on Angel Gomez? That's a good question. I, I, I'm, I have to be honest. I'm not completely sure. Uh... Right, so I, I'm, I'm looking this up as we speak. I, I haven't done anything on this. I thought yeah. I thought he was in discussions with a new contract mm. for a new contract. Um, so I haven't got any updates on it. But I mean, it's an interesting one because he hasn't really played that much, has he? No, um, no. For you, um, I mean, I don't know. 
I'm not. I, listen, I'm not. I'm not going to say he, he can't do it United at all because there's not been enough enough opportunity. But you know, I think I don't know. Let, let, let's wait and see. I don't think they should let him go. I think I think they do rate him. And you know, if you look at what he's done with Greenwood, you know, Chong a little bit as well, maybe not as much. You know, he is. I mean, that, again, that's another reason why they wanted him there because because he is. You know, he will give young players a, a chance. Solskjaer. I think he will get his chance, Gomez. So so let's wait and see. But I don't. Have, no, I don't have any sort of fresh info on that at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember being. I, I get up to Old Trafford a couple of times a season if I can. Obviously, quite a long way from <laughs> sure. Cornwall. But um, I do remember being at uh, and how Gomez's debut. It was that uh, home game against Palace on the last day of. It was just for Stockholm, actually. Uh, in yes, yes. And there was a real air of excitement around Gomez. I, there was a real po- positive mood around United at that point. Actually, I remember you know Josh Harrop scored, and it was yes, a young side. It, yeah. um, real air of excitement around Gomez, and he just hasn't really, as you say, hasn't but played. yeah. I mean, uh, do you remember James? James Wilson did he yes. score twice under gigs? Was it? He Wasn't did. It yeah, yeah. Sorry if I got that slightly wrong, but no, he no, was under gigs. Yeah. So, and then I think there was another debutant. The guy who's now at Derby. What's his name? Welsh lad. He Tom scored. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, and I think it was four 0 or something. Four won that game. And this is this is kind of what I was getting at with Gomez. You never quite know with young players which which way it is going to go. I mean, um, who was the left back? What was his Danny name? Mitchell. Yes, yes. Uh, there's been a few. I mean, I mean, going even further back, and I know there were reasons for this. But that, do you remember that Van Hal season when you had? Who did you have? You had people. Uh, there was, was Paddy McNair, Tyler Black. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. You've rescued me there. Yeah, McNair's who I'm thinking of. I think he, he got a little bit of run in the team. I think I remember a game. Uh, it was um, Di Maria's debut at Burnley. He came on for Anderson. Yeah, and McNair started in that when he was sort of playing free at the back, that sort of thing. So I don't know. Yeah, with, with Gomez, I mean, Wilson for, for, for ages. That was kind of why they let um, Hernandez go. No, no, a Welbeck go that summer mm. because they thought James Wilson was going to be, you know, the real deal. And it, it obviously didn't happen for him. I know he's had some injuries. So that's the thing with, with Gomez. It's always interesting because if you remember Lingard, it didn't actually break through. So he had that get, he had his debut under Van Hal, and he, unfortunately, I think he broke his leg, and that kind of, you know, he, he was out after the season, went yeah. to Derby, and you thought it's never going to happen. For him. But he ended up being an FA Cup. Uh, uh, goal score, uh, winning goal scorer, yeah. you know, and three United and, and a proper player. So, I think he will get. I think he and, and others will will get a chance. But it is very difficult, isn't it, with young players to to know exactly. That's why Greenwood. I mean, Green the performance. It's difficult to say, but I think Greenwood has, a, has an argument for the performance of the season for United. And this the game is against Spurs that week when you had Spurs on the Wednesday and City uh, on the Saturday in the league, and it looked like Solskjaer might be sacked actually, and he he, he played him. Uh, at centre forward against Spurs, and I think and he played unbelievable Greenwood. And I thought Crumbs, as a 17, 18 year old lad coming in, mm. Solskjaer's, Solskjaer's under a lot of pressure here. You know, and you won the game 2 0, was it 2 1? He didn't score Greenwood, but he just looked, you know, proper footballer. I would be very excited about him. He, every time he, meant, he talks about him, Solskjaer, he says he's basically the best finisher at the club, which is, you know, a fair enough compliment, isn't it, from Oligon and Solskjaer? Yeah. Um, just moving on from United, I've got a couple of general questions here about. Uh, sort of sport, sports journalism. Uh, NUFC Oscar has asked, uh, what's the most important thing to think about when becoming a sports journalist? Well, a good que- for a start, that's a very good question. So you, you, you're kind of a little bit in the way there. I think it's like anything. If you really love it, if you really want to do it, then you've got to love it. And that, so what that means to me is you don't have to, th- you know, you don't question anything. You just do whatever it takes, within reason, of course. You've, so you've got about loads and loads of enthusiasm and just, just keep on going. I know it's going to sound a bit cheesy or something like something out of a Hollywood movie or whatever, but you will get a break in the end if you keep on it. I mean, I, I could bore you with how I got a break at the Observer, mm. you know, and but it was like something out, out of a cheesy movie. But it was only because I, I thought, oh, here's an opportunity, and, and I sort of made it into into a chance. And you know, that was when I was on work experience actually. So yeah. from, from from actual experience, I know that that but, you know you, you can you can make it happen. You've got to make it happen, but just just hang in there. But also. Read everything you can, because um, I, and I don't just mean all the sports writers, but I do obviously mean that first of all. But read everything you can because it's all about writing as well as asking questions. Mm. Um, be respectful and just try be respectful of the, of the trade. So I know sometimes because even I I can do this. Sometimes you read a report, not not of sports, I know what's going on there, but of news, and you think crumbs. What why is what? And, and then then, you, then I remember. Wait a minute, there might be stuff that the writer is not allowed to to, to put in there. Uh, for legal reasons, mm. you know, so so just try and learn the trade from the from the journalist, the sports journalist point of view as much as possible, because 
that will help you a lot. But just you know, just just keep at it. Really, I know it's not it's not that you know a revelatory a piece of advice, but it really is the best. If you love it, then then you're halfway yeah. there. Because if you, if you love it, then it means that you always you always keep going. You you you'll get a break. Yeah, lovely. It's some fantastic tips there. Thank you very much uh, for, for all our listeners as well and and myself. I think. Of um... course. L- listen, I have to say it's it's a little bit like Ferguson as a manager at United. Mm. This might sound a bit stupid, but I actually think he he. Even though everyone knows he was a genius, I actually think it's, he was underrated how good he was. I saw a stat today about his performance, you know, United performance in the Premier League under him. God, it was only three years when he never won it. I know. It, it, no, it, on the bounce. And even yeah. then he came close and blah, 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 blah. Um, so, so he's underrated. And what I'm, what I'm trying to say about my trade is it actually it looks good. And it, I tell you what, it's actually underrated until you do it. It is an unbelievable job to do. I feel very lucky. It's also a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's mm. a really good, good laugh. Um, and it's, you know, you're getting to write about stuff that matters that people care about. My, you know, my job, I'm lucky. It's The Guardian. It's a great newspaper. It's the biggest club in the world. And, and also City, we're a massive deal now. So I would say to anyone who, who fancies it, go for it. Because, you, you know, when, once you do get in, you're going to you're gonna enjoy it even more than you probably hoped you would. Yeah, and actually, I was just going to ask you, Just you say it's a lot of fun, and it, it sounds it, to be honest. It's something that I've always... Personally, want go to, for it then. Go for it. it. Yeah. Um, what would you What would you say is your your fate your personal favourite moment from from your time? Uh, oh, doing... crumbs, what, what a brilliant question that is. <laughs> oh. So I I was lucky enough to do all other sport until I got this job. So I I've done world title fights. I've mm. done Olympics. Um, I've done NFL in in America. I've done football tours. I've done the the, the very first T twenty. Uh, cricket. I don't know, really. I mean, favorite moment. <laughs> um, no, it's a good question. I mean, um, I did a story ahead of the 2006 World Cup. Angola had qualified for it for the very first time, mm. and Angola, as you, you may or may not know, you know, it's a pretty war torn country. Mm. Um, and I went over there to do a preview of of their team. You know, to sort of do a story about their team looking ahead to their very first World Cup. And I landed there in Angola on my own, um, 2006, obviously, this, this would have been. And, you know, I, I had a, let's say, let's say a guide, a translator. Um, and we went out to one of the villages and the car broke down. This is like on the second day, the car broke down. Mm. And how can I say, it's, cha- it's a challenging environment, of course, it is for, 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 you know, for the people who live there. You know, the poverty there is can be very difficult to look at and I'm just looking around and thinking crumbs how have I ended up here because you know I felt a little bit vulnerable I've got to be honest maybe yeah. that's a bit ignorant but I didn't know anyone there and it, but that that's why that I'm thinking of that because even while I was there I, 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 I sort of I enjoyed the adventure element it's like crumbs this is you know this is a bit interesting where, where I've ended up here mm. so that, that that's that's one of them but you know I, I did the I did the Moscow uh, final that you that United won when you beat Chelsea that mm. was a Hell of a game of football for, for a final. Yeah, you know, how eventful was that? I've done that. I've got to say, your listeners won't like it. The Aguero goal was unbelievable <laughs> to be there that that day. I've got to say, I know you don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, United, no, I... but I'm being honest. Yeah, you know, it was just like you know uh, when Liverpool beat Chelsea, the goal goal when Mourinho was manager of Chelsea, the semi final. Yeah, yeah. Um, when Van Persie scored a hat trick for you when you won the title against Villa yeah. under Ferguson, that was a you know, I don't know. Even even when when you absolutely bombed. Against um, under David Moyes against um, Olympiacos in the Champions League at their place in yeah. the first leg. Honestly, Henry, it was it was. I'm going to say that this was like the oddest game of football I've ever seen from a, a top level side because you were so bad. Yeah. It's like people like Van Persie and Ashley Young couldn't control it. You're like, am mm. I actually seeing this? Even that was interesting. You know, I'm, I'm not being mean there. Or, you know, yeah. rude about United. It was just interesting just to see that. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, you know, there's been a few, but yeah, certainly stuff like going to Angola was you know interesting um yeah you know a sense of adventure sort of thing yeah no some fantastic well you got a real pick pick and pick of the lot but <laughs> there you got quite a few you know iconic moments to to choose from um so that's fantastic this is the last main question i might segue okay. to something else we'll have to see um what is it like in a press conference after a bad result or the manager oh. is angry <laughs> what a great what a great uh, question so maybe one way of answering this so i've had a few uh uh, three examples. Do you remember the um, Mourinho respect, respect, respect? Yeah. So I happened to be the person who said that to me <laughs> uh, because uh, <laughs> he said that too. Sorry, because obviously it was Spurs. I think your first home game of that season, 
you lost three nil, was it? Yep. Yeah, three uh, nil, three nil. Well, yeah. So it's August Bank Holiday. <laughs> we go in there, and he and he started to say, or he, or he did say, among other things, um, oh, you know, if you didn't think we played very well, then how about the fans clapping us? To which I I said, well, if you're using the fans basically as a as a measure of mm. you know how well you played, how come some of them left early? And that's when he k- kicked off <laughs> <laughs> big time. And so I'm sitting there thinking, oh, this is interesting. And, you know, that, 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 again, that's interesting. As long as you're respectful, yeah, then, you know, when that happens, the one thing you don't want to do when that happens is, is sort of start arguing back or trying to be clever. Just, just, you know, you've asked the question, the questions hopefully be respectful. And if the manager doesn't, doesn't like it, then he's, you've got every right not to like it. You know, he's the manager of the club. Mm. It's up to him. So I'm trying to think of other ones. Um, well, there's, there's been a few. Mm. Uh, Guardiola had a go at me when he was manager of Bayern Munich against United actually it was under Moyes mm. don't know if you remember that. how old are you Henry about 19 I don't, yeah you remember that won't you obviously oh 17 yeah the, the, ever, the ever volley wasn't it and then the instant reply from Bayern at their place wasn't it right so, yeah so I'm thinking of the game at Old Trafford in the first leg mm. basically it was a draw I think it was nil-nil um, and he got a bit frustrated because he was sort of saying Guardiola that it was difficult to break United down and I got the impression or maybe thought he was sort of saying that Moyes' United had been a bit negative. And you, you can look this up on YouTube. It got a little bit surreal. So I asked him this question. Um, and after I asked it, I must have looked down at my notes or something, because next thing you know, he's saying to me, you know, look at me. You know, when I answer, when I, when I answer you, you know, you had need to look at me. And I started to think, well, this is a bit, uh, I wasn't, you know. Uh, and, you know, he, he lost his temper a little bit. So you've just got to basically sit there. I mean, but when you're not directly involved, but, yeah, it's a bit difficult, you know. I'm just trying to think, like, say, that that loss of yours to who you, was it? Cardiff, you lost to the last day of the season last year. Very bad, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Cardiff. Or, yeah, you know, you, you've got to ask the questions, but sometimes it's. I'll tell you another one. Actually, England go out, and you won't remember this because you you only just be born. But England went out of the 2006 World Cup against Portugal mm. on penalties. Rooney got sent off. Yeah. Yeah, he stamped. Uh, he? Yeah, with Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. he stamped on Carvalho. Yeah. So you go out and Ericsson comes in, the England manager, and he just looked because Ericsson was quite a calm, cool customer, but he just looked, and he, mm. you know, you'd expect him to be, but it was just a surprise you never see him like this. He looked ashen faced. Well, he was ashen faced. It just looked so gutted. You felt bad for him mm. having to ask the questions. Of course, you feel like that. But you, you know, there's people, there's fans basically, or whoever, interested people watching the game like that, or watching United, or watching whoever. They want to know what the manager's saying. So you've got to ask the question. So you just got to be respectful. But sometimes you do feel, other times, it, it, I'm trying to think of an example now, but other times it can be quite funny the, the way it goes off or a manager will deflect it. And, and going back to Solskjaer, I would say that through all the bad times, he's looked gutted and not rested, but he's never really been sour. I can remember even once. And that to me, you know, you, you can not like losing, but, you know, there's a way of losing, isn't there? Mm-hmm. You know, that's, 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 that's kind of a bit classy. I mean, with with Ferguson because I only had him a year and a half, you know, when I before he, before he retired, I was I think yeah. I was the only journalist on the patch who'd never been banned by him. But that was only because I'd only been there a season and a half. <laughs> if I'd been there any longer, I'm sure there would have been, you know, because everyone basically got banned by by Ferguson. Mm. But because he was so good, you know, you just swallowed it basically. Yeah, is um just having interest. Is there any managers that you've consistently struggled with? Is there is there any? Um... Not really, no. I mean, Guardiola is interesting because I, when he became manager of City, I didn't know whether he would remember that that Bayern Munich thing. And the only that might sound a bit like big-headed. Why would he remember it? But it mm. was made a quite a big deal of certainly in Germany. I mean, um, uh, is it Build put it on their back page of their web website? The fact they'd had this sort of argument with me. Mm. Um, and when I went when I went to the return, the game you just mentioned there, when uh, every scored for you yeah. in, in the sort of pre-game presser, I was thinking, is he going to remember this? Basically, this sort of disagreement we had the, the week before and he sort of said oh but he, and he did remember me and he because i sat there and he said oh welcome to to, to to munich so he was very gracious so anyway fast forward to sit i'm thinking is there going to be any bad blood there as he remembered it but he hasn't in fact it's gone the other way he, he's been you know a delight a delight basically to sort of cover so i've not really had a, you know what it's not worth anyone's while especially mine to have an ongoing disagreement with manager no way that's unprofessional if, if i'd even go so far as to say is even if and i'm not saying this is been in any of the situations that I've had, but even if you have, even if a manager has been, let's say, uh, you know, got, got the wrong end of the stick with you or is a little bit rude, or, 
and, and it's ongoing. It's actually work. I would actually make the effort to, to, to sort of try and sort out, even if I felt it wasn't down to me, just because I've got a job to do. And, you know, and I can't do it really if there's an issue there. So thankfully so far that, you know, there hasn't been anything like that at all. Yeah, well, that's, that's a, I think that's a good represent, representation of you as well. The fact there's no uh, c- continuous, uh, you know, <laughs> no. yeah. any beef with managers, etc. Jamie, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, some incredibly oh, interesting, thank you. Some in- some incredibly interesting stuff. Um, it, fantastic to have you on. Um, uh, thank you so much. Though, if you just want to say something, just to just to end things off. Well, no, just basically, thank you so much. That is obviously a privilege to be the first person um, on this podcast. I hope it goes well. I hope people aren't, you know, too bored when they listen to this. But thank you very yeah. much, Henry, and everyone. Basically, stay safe. Look after yourselves, and you know, hopefully sooner rather than later we'll be back to normal life. But the main thing at the moment is everyone stays healthy. Obviously, yeah. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you very much. Cheers, Henry. Cheers.